Hello everyone, I am Dr. Fernando Hurtado, Tallis and Union High School District's English Acquisition Program Coordinator. In this module, you will learn about the new Arizona English Language Development Approach Framework that was recently approved by the State Education Committee at the Arizona Department of Education. Before we learn about the new Language Development Approach Framework, I will highlight the stakeholders involved and the process in creating the framework. SB 1014 was signed by Governor Ducey on February 14, 2019, giving public schools and teachers of English learners more flexibility to develop instructional models that best fit the needs of their communities. The Senate bill passed the legislature with unanimous support, which eliminates the rigid four-hour state mandated block of English language instruction and instead allows public schools and teachers to develop their own research-based models based on the needs of their individual students. Currently, secondary English learners spend four hours each school day in structured English immersion and instruction. Senate Bill 1014 allows schools instead to provide evidence and research-based models of structured English immersion for 100 minutes a day, 500 minutes a week, or 300 hours a year to students in grades seven through 12. The bill provides schools more flexibility in how they deliver instruction to English learners, and that would help more EL students graduate high school on time. It's important to know that the EL student graduation rate in Arizona is currently about 20%, the lowest for these students in the entire nation. The EL Advisory Council was comprised of a diverse group of community and district stakeholders who in collaboration with the Arizona Department of Education provided insight and informed decisions affecting Arizona's English learners. The EL Framework Subcommittee is a select group of the EL Advisory Council representing stakeholders from across the state. The EL Frameworks Committee was tasked in creating common understanding of evidence-based effective instructional practices and the team also worked together and used evidence-based practices to create Arizona's language development approach. And finally, the language development approach is a tool to help vet EL program proposals submitted by school districts. Both groups were led by the then Associate Superintendent of High Academic Standards for Students, Mrs. Kate Wright. The EL Frameworks Committee was comprised of 16 members that included directors and coordinators of English acquisition, principals, and teachers from school districts and charters from across the state, and included organizational allies. The team also was comprised of eight members of the OLS team and two West Ed consultants who played a vital role in designing the language development approach framework. The EL Frameworks Committee reviewed seven major research syntheses published between 2007 and 2017 to identify practices with strong evidence base. Here you see some of the foundational literature and research that was reviewed by the EL Frameworks Committee. For example, the committee looked at studies from the National Academy of Sciences the Promoting the Educational Success of Children and Youth Learning English, Promising Futures Publication, that makes recommendations for policy practice and research and data collection, focused on addressing the challenges in caring for and educating ELs from birth to grade 12. The Institute of Education Sciences publication, which houses reviews that are more selective. And we also looked at understanding language which centers on language literacy and learning in the content areas. Now, the main thing to emphasize about the foundational literature and research is their sheer volume. Lots of people, lots of studies reviewed, lots of recommendations. And there was great effort to exhaustively review and reflect what was, what was out there in the field.
In partnership with West Ed, the EL Frameworks community came to a consensus in determining an adequate language development approach definition to guide the process. And the, the team agreed that a language development approach is a set of underlying assumptions grounded in research about how one develops language, literacy, and learning in, in all subject matters for English learners throughout a school, district, or state. Here you see a visual that captures the five components that make up the Arizona's language development approach. This approach is the foundational understanding that English learners are valuable members of our education community and all individuals at every level within the educational system have an active role uh, in ensuring the success and achievement of the over 80,000 multilingual learners who attend Arizona schools. These four principles that surround the core reflect the research-based and non-negotiable negotiable components of a comprehensive instructional program for Arizona's English learners. And the outer ring identifies the overarching goal of language and content instruction for English learners. Through implementation of the four principles, Arizona's English learners will develop a sense of agency, confidence, and determination. So I will leave this visual up for a few more seconds so that you can read each principle, but we will, we will take a closer look and learn more about the elements that encompass each individual principle in the following slides. Principle one, asset-based behaviors and expectations, proclaims that English learners bring rich linguistic resources and cultural knowledge with them to the school environment. And all systems and programs leverage these assets and provide opportunities for students to demonstrate these contributions, which also align with asset-based behaviors and expectations and provide opportunities and supports to ensure culturally and linguistically sustaining practices for English learners. Educators who value principle one recognize, for example, that multilingualism and biliteracy are assets, are responsive to the different strengths and needs and identities of English learners, and recognize that there is no universal EL student profile and no one size fits all approach. Principle one also asserts that asset-based behaviors and expectations will support the development of student agency when educators, for example, provide opportunities for English learners to show mastery of competency, reinforce growth mindset, and or address students' social, emotional, and physical needs. The EL Frameworks Committee believes that if ELs are given the opportunity to participate in asset-based learning activities, they will develop confidence in their own skills and knowledge, a sense of self-efficacy so that eventually they are successful in all areas of life. Principle two, Integrated instruction in disciplinary language and content emphasizes the notion that all educators share the responsibility for designing instruction that integrates language and literacy development with content learning. This is accomplished by using content standards to plan instruction along with the English language proficiency standards to support differentiation by language proficiency level. By using scaffolded supports, academic language development, and collaborative discussions, reading and writing, 
Educators help students develop disciplinary content knowledge, language, and autonomy. Educators who regard principle two differentiate disciplinary language instruction using the English language proficiency standards. They model learning approaches so students can construct meaning using metacognition strategies and or engage ELs in extended academic discourse and abundant authentic writing. Principle two also promotes the idea that if English learners are engaged in integrated instruction in disciplinary language and content, then their student agency will continue to develop. For example, educators can provide choices or open-ended opportunities to select strategies and tactics, tactics for mastery of language and content. This can be done in all content areas. It is critical for educators to integrate language and content instruction for all students, especially for English learners, so that they can continue to develop a sense of voice, confidence, and self-determination as they use content and language in tandem to meet their goals. Principle 3, Targeted and Explicit Language Instruction stresses that explicit language instruction is a critical opportunity to intentionally support English learners in developing the discourse practices they need to engage with rigorous grade level disciplinary content. Just as literacy and language should be integrated into content instruction, so should content and disciplinary practices, practices be integrated into language instruction. Educators use the English language proficiency standards within content material to teach language. For example, educators who regard this principle create opportunities for English learners to use language and reflect on their understanding across the four language domains, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and in direct connection to rigorous grade level content. Educators also design explicit instruction that provides students with an understanding of how language functions with a content disciplined lens. Additionally, if educators encourage independent learning by teaching effective strategies for learning language, for example, EL students will continue developing a sense of voice confidence, and self-efficacy around their language use. The last principle, principle four, assessment, monitoring, and feedback, influences how districts and schools use English language proficiency standards, diagnostic tools, formative assessment practices, and summative assessments to measure progress of English learners' language and content knowledge, and ultimately how to inform instruction. Educators who appreciate Principle 4 use Arizona English language proficiency standards to align instruction and assessment on a language learning continuum. And they also, for example, use Arizona state assessment data to evaluate language and content instructional effectiveness and inform future language and academic program decisions. EL student agency is developed by educators designing a pathway to learning for ELs that provide opportunities for self-direction and or help English learners develop the habit of self-reflection using various formative assessments. The key here is for, for educators to encourage English learners set their own goals and, and learn how to measure and evaluate their progress towards intended goals. If you'd like to learn more about Arizona's language development approach 
and the research behind the creation of the framework, please reach out to me or you can go directly to the Arizona Department of Education's website and access the language approach document and other documents related to English learners. On behalf of the English Acquisition Program District staff, we thank you for taking the time to learn more about Arizona's language development approach.